Okay. Dilip, it is now yes. asking. Uh, after I can I... see the same screen. Thank you. Okay. It is now asking which of the best describes what you do: software engineer, project manager, QA. Just engineer. do a software engineer. Okay. You can skip it too. Okay. I mean, if it's asking you too many questions, just skip it. I think uh, there should be a skip at the bottom. Okay, I am good. I'm at the same screen as you were. Okay. So let me see it. Uh... I also got it. Okay, so we're still waiting for Omega and Tirth to join. Oh, I already did it. I'm already in there. Oh, you're in there? Yeah. Okay. So it might be just taking a little bit of time to refresh it. Is it that AR, yep. AR Sprint one? You yeah, you should be at this or it should be at this screen. Yeah, I'm on that screen right now. Okay. The second one, yeah. I so is I'm anybody? Not, I'm not able to reach there. So I send you the invite again. Do, do you get an email? Uh, it's Nisha. Nisha. Yep. <laughs> Let me see. I have to open in a laptop or I can open in mobile? A laptop. Laptop. Oh, okay. No mobile. I just resent you in white just in case if you didn't get it. It should be now at the top of your email. Okay. I'm opening it. So everybody else other than Nisha in the Jira board? Yes. Yes, I'm in as well. Okay. I think we can go ahead uh, uh, because we will give uh, some time um, afterwards okay. for folks to work it through. Is... So it should be all right. Okay. Uh, Harry Potter and your team are waiting for you. Is join them now? Yeah. No, and Herschel, you have start recorded, right? Yes, I, inter, I have recorded. Inter full name. Yeah, just, just go through registration process, Nisha. Okay, I have to create everything, right? Yes. Okay. So we're going to get started, Nisha, while you're doing that, right? So this software is similar to Azure DevOps that you have been working through it, right? So this is from Atlassian which is also fairly commonly used um, software in the um, industry. Um, most of the big companies is gonna have either the Azure DevOps, if they're like, it's heavily Microsoft shop, or they will have Jira if they're like more diverse shop like a JP Morgan. So JP Morgan has um, their own version of the Jira. What you're seeing here is a cloud-based instance, which is hosted by Atlassian, okay? But when you take it into the corporate, it should not look significantly different. Okay. So now when you go in, right? So we talked about, uh, let me get that. So when you create it or when you go through it, you will have multiple projects, right? So at the top, you're gonna have a whole bunch of filters um, talking about the managing the people, managing the apps. Uh, not necessarily everything may be enabled for you unless you are doing a Jira administration. I'm able to do this because I'm logged in as an admin, but mainly the two areas where you need to look into it is the projects and the dashboards. Okay. So most of the times for a given project, you may create multiple dashboards or for a projects, you have a one-on-one -on -one dashboard. So if you're working on one project, then you will have only one de de default dashboard. But if you're working on multiple projects or for a given project, you have multiple team and um, you can create a dashboard per team. Okay, so depending on that, you will have more than one entry here down here. So this one, if you look into it, it's a project list versus if I click on the dashboard, it'll take me to my default dashboard, which will allows me to look into what all uh, my action items are like it's here are the activities that are assigned to me. This is the overall activity stream that has been done, as well as it'll show you the project. 
So if I click on the projects, then I will just go into what is known as the project backlog view. Okay, so this is the default board. So if you look into it, right, this looks fairly similar to the Azure when you were doing it. You have to-do list, you have the list which is in progress, and you have list of items that you are done with it. Okay, so now let me walk you through first thing what is known as a backlog. So if you recall it, when we did the, um, the various software development methodology, remember we talked about Agile is kind of comprised of multiple sprints, right? Sprint is between two to four weeks where you're doing the work. So think of this way, this backlog, essentially it, it's a list of all the work you need to do it for a given project. And then when you break it down into a manageable chunk called a sprint, you can create multiple sprints. So like, for example, here we have created two sprints called AR Sprint 1, AR Sprint 2. If I want to create third sprint, I essentially create a third sprint and I'll comment here. And so typically um, the project manager or a scrum master working with the team, they look into it and says, hey, in the first two weeks, what the amount of the work we will be able to do it. So they take it from the backlog and drag it and put it into the sprints. So here, if you look into it, there is another requirement called AR4. And if I want to say it's, hey, I want to drag it and say, it's, we'll do that in the second sprint. This is how it does it. It's fairly simple. You just drag and drop. Okay. So this gives you a view of what work I will be doing it at each of the sprints. And the backlog essentially contains a list of everything that you need to do it for this project. Any questions so far? And each sprint will have their deadline. I see, I see a, a yeah, time Yeah, so each here. sprint will have a start date and end date, right? So this one is, we started it on like it's Monday. It's gonna end on the first March because it's a two week sprint. Okay. Now, when you look into overall backlog, right, you will have a concept called as an issue, which issue are nothing but your stories, similar to what you created a requirement in Azure DevOps. Same way here, it's each requirement, and I'll show you in a moment. But there is also a concept called epics in Jira. So epics are nothing but a big grouping of the work, which may have one or more stories associated with it. So for example, I, I may just say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna create a lender epic where all the work related to the lender is gonna be defined in that one. I may do the same thing with the dealer epic. I may do the same thing with um, credit application epic. Okay. And so every story you can assign it to epic. So let me see if I can create it. Uh, right now there's no epic. So if I click on this create, it essentially allows me to create story, task or epic, right? So I'm just gonna show here, I'm just creating a, let's call it the dealer management, right? So that's a group, so. And then you can set a whole bunch of what is assigning. Uh, we can set the epic at the epic level start date and end date. Now this one doesn't have to be two weeks. It could be months. Okay. And then when I just say it, I'm going to create it. So you will notice that that epic is created as AR7. Now, if you look into it, the first story is associated with the dealer. So I can just go ahead and uh, edit the story. You see here, add epic. It allows me to select the epic. 
can all add that epic. So now this first story is part of the dealer management epic. Okay, and then I can just show an epic panel. Okay, and then if you notice that if I select on that epic, that's the only story which appears here. So it's a way to group the requirement. Okay. And I strongly encourage all of you to play around with this tool, right? So if I just say, hey, I want to like, it's going to show all the issues. I want to turn off the Epic panel and I want to show all the issues. Now it's everything else has showed up. Okay. So that's about Epic and the stories. Now, once you have each individual sprint, you can always start the sprint and complete the sprint. There are two rules that apply to it. Okay, at any given point, you can have only one active sprint. So if you look into it, right here, I've defined AR sprint one, two, and three, but there is only one which is currently active. And since this sprint is active, I can't start the sprint. Those capabilities is disabled. Okay. So at any given point, you have only one chunk of the work that you will be working on it. Now, when I look into the app uh, sprint, there is a different views on the left-hand side. You can just see it, right? So I've been looking at the, for our flown project, I'm looking at the backlog. Let's say I want to see it. Hey, I, I understand all these things. I want to focus on what work I'm doing right now. So you click on the board and it'll give you all the stories within that sprint. So this becomes a, your sprint's current working view. Any question? All right. So now that I have kind of like it's on a given sprint, it, each one has what it's known as story has a status. So typically what happens is when a developer wants to start working on a story, they just take that story and says, hey, I'm gonna now work on this story. So they will move the story into in progress status and they will do all the work. So if you click on that, there are a whole bunch of things they can do around with it, okay? Now I can double click on that and it will bring up similar to what you saw it in Azure DevOps, the panel for talking about the story, okay? So I can, like if this is the title, if you guys recall it, I can add a description, right? I can say every dealer is assigned a franchise franchise number at the time of creation. Okay, so you can just say what the requirement is. You could put all the description. Uh, if you notice that there is a whole bunch of, you can put a link or you can do a whole bunch of attachments as you go through it. Now you can save those things. Now things you're gonna look into it is also something known as a Zafar scale. So this is nothing but a plugin tool that essentially allows you to do whole test case management along with the Jira stories. So here I can create a new test case or if I already have defined a test case in my bank, I can just add an existing test case to this requirement, okay? So in this case, let's just create a new test case. So if I click on that, if you notice it, it went in creation panel and it goes into that tool and it just says, hey, you're gonna create a test case, right? So I can just say it's a, You need franchise number for a dealer, right? You can put the precondition, okay? And then you can just go into additional details. Uh, you can put all this uh, status and everything, and then you can just click on save. If you want the scripts, you can put it all the test steps here, okay? Uh, when you do the execution, it, it 
gives you a whole history of how many times this test case is run, which one is failed, and what every time, what was the status of that execution. The traceability essentially allows you to track back if this test case is created, how many requirements is associated with it. And then you can perform any attachment, whether uh, you want to do a data, test data set up here, or if, when you run it, you want to like it's drop and drag the images of expected results, you can do all those things. And then history talks about who created, how much created and so on. Okay, so that's about test case. Okay, and then you can create a new version. Let's say I did 1.0 and then you said, hey, now that's an old version. I want to create a new version. You can click on new version and create a new test case. What do you mean by new version? So let's say I, I have written this test case and, and then we went in production with the systems. Now the requirement came back and just says, hey, now we need to able to not only just create a unique franchise number, but do something additional also with that requirement. Okay. At that point, we can say, hey, you know what? Now this test case is no longer valid because the requirement has changed. But I have to update this test case and I want to maintain whatever the old test case was. In those scenarios, I'll go ahead and create a new version. So I still have the old test case as is with the same name and everything. It's just that the version is new one. So if you recall it, right, even in the Word document, we had a test case version number. Did you recall it? So those are the kind of things that, hey, this is an older version, now I'm adding a new version, right? So this is one of, I can just say, hey, I'm gonna create a new version, right? And I said, yeah, go ahead and create. If you notice that all of these things remain exact same, the version number has changed from one to two. Now I can go back and say, hey, you know what? I wanna access the old version of this document or test case, I can do that. Okay. Do you see it, how I create the test cases? Okay, so quiet. Okay. Now, there is also another concept called test cycle in Jira. Essentially, all it allows you to is create a group of test cases and says, hey, this is going to be belong to this cycle. So when you test it and when you run it, remember what we talked about the regression testing? That I had to retest everything which was already tested and working it. So you can create a test cycle for every project and say, hey, I'm going to do it this first iteration of testing, or I can create second iteration, right? So you can create a test cycle. Okay. And then if you notice it, right, so you can just say it's here are all the test cases. I'm adding one test case for that. Okay. And then you keep adding a test cases more and more to that cycle. It'll give you detail every time you run the whole cycle. If there are 10 test cases into it, um, it'll run all those 10 together, one after another one, and it'll give you a status of how everything you ran it. Then if you look at it, right? So this one, I have an Epic. This one I haven't assigned to Epic, so it's not showing it up here. Any questions? As you can see it, like it's fairly similar to Azure DevOps. Even for most part, look and feel and integration of the boards are more or less kind of same. 
here for this particular story. You can see what our test cases are associated with it, what test cycles are associated with. And as Herschel mentioned, right, you can put back and forth the comment and you can do the history around it too. It shows you what is my status, right? So it just says there is only three status for this one. It's to do, done, and in progress. A lot of times, most of the company define a customized workflow by defining an additional state, something like ready for review. So this is when all the work is done, but your product owner uh, essentially reviews the work before approving and says, yeah, it's done. <coughs> and then let's say, now that we have team members assigned, I can go ahead and pick any person to be assigned to that. So let's say if I say this particular story, let's say Mega is gonna work on it so I can assign it to her. And then she will get some sort of notification, but hey, you've been assigned to this story. Okay. That is also another concept that we didn't use it in Azure DevOps, but it's there and it's also in Jira is something known as story point estimate. So it talks about what is the effort required to implement this story? And sometimes it includes development and testing functionality both. Okay. You can estimate based on the amount of the work needs to be done and the complexity of the work is there. Okay. And then you can just say, let's say, uh, typically it's used of Fibonacci number. And let's say I said it's a three point word story. It'll just show at that. So your project manager, essentially when they look into the sprint, uh, especially your scrum master, they look and says, hey, in this sprint, we are predicting it to do this many points of story work. And they look also into it and say, hey, are we signing it up sufficient work or are we over signing it? Okay. Because your goal is to get the work done within two sprint. So if you assign everything into that sprint and if it's only five people doing the work and you, say, hey, this work is gonna take 10 people's worth of time, then you know, obviously, that you're not gonna meet your goal of delivering that thing into that sprint. So they typically use the story point estimate and the capacity of the team to determine how much work you can actually do it in a sprint. Okay. Any questions? question regarding the, um, the story point number. How do you know which one to select? Is there a... So every team decides the scale that they want to use it. So for example, um, in the team that I'm currently working at JP Morgan, right? We have decided that we'll use it story points from one to 13 as the scale, but it's not linear. It's typically, they use something known as a Fibonacci sequence. So it essentially gives you how much complex the story is compared to it. So typically it's Fibonacci sequences one, two, three, five, then it goes to eight, and then it goes to 13. Okay. So the lower the number, the more complex the story. No, the lower the number, easier is the story. Okay. Okay. But typically when you say it's something is three pointer and something is five pointer, it's not typically like it's, hey, it's gonna take me almost double the amount of the work. What it talks about is this story is more complicated, almost double the complication than the one which is three point. Okay. okay. And each team usually come up with a rule of what the scale we're gonna use it and how we're gonna do it. Okay. So it'll be per team. So think about it, right? A lot of times, the amount of the work you need to do it is also not only just dependent on the time it takes it, but the complexity, as well as the skill of the people who are working on it, All right? So let, let's take an example. If your story point is that, hey, I'm gonna write a security module for validating the uh, dealer user credentials, okay? If I'm coming in and I'm completely fresh and I don't know a lot of programming and how the system is implemented, it's gonna take me a, probably more time because I have to understand the system. I have to think through it because this is the first time I'm implementing it, how all those things will be done, right? 
So somebody who is kind of new to the programming world, it's going to take a lot more longer than somebody who is very experienced in that. Let's say if I've already done those type of work for five other systems before, to do it one more time, it's not going to be that complex for me because I already know how to do it, what all work I need to do. So I may estimate that story a lot more simpler or easier story compared to the other person who is just brand new and doesn't know the deal. Okay. okay. So there are different yardsticks you need to apply it in order to decide it what the story point you're going to do it and typically all the teams when they are formed they get together and says okay how are we going to estimate our work right and once you have that scale everybody uses that scale to estimate the work any other questions What would happen if a team is not able to execute all the tasks uh, in sprint one? So typically, if you don't finish the task, mm -hmm. there are two, one of the two things you can do it. Uh, depending on the work that you're doing it, you may decide that, hey, I didn't finish this work. I'm going to put it in the back end of the backlog. And then they, they essentially, it's known as um, essentially the incomplete tasks or incomplete work. Mm -hmm. So you don't get the credit for those story points, like what I said at like three years. Yeah, right? yeah. So now it says, hey, in, within that two weeks, you deliver only this many points of actual work. So you project that, mm -hmm. let's say 50 point worth of work, but you finished only 40 point. Okay. So you do that. And then typically you put it uh, in the backlog or sometimes you say, hey, I'll continue with this work in the next sprint. So that 10 point story gets moved to the next sprint. Now, what most of the team does it is that, look, we didn't meet it, our goal. So maybe in the sprint too, we don't estimate that we'll finish 50 points worth of work. Okay. Now we will adjust our estimation and say, hey, we'll do only 40 points. Mm -hmm. right? Or sometimes people say, hey, you know what? I didn't do the work because two of the five team members were out sick. It was not predictable. And then they are now fit and they will be able to do the work that you project. So you may still do it 50 point estimation in the next step. Okay, thank you. But that's what you use it to determine how much capacity or the work you will do it. And it's very important because remember, if you look it into the sprints, right in the agile methodology, mm -hmm. at the end of every sprint, I'm gonna deploy something in production that my users can use it, right? So it's right. very important for me to get better at prediction as what work I'll finish in two weeks so that the user knows what functionality they will get it at the end of two weeks. Okay, thank you. Okay. Now, a lot of times, um, JIRA is similar to um, Azure DevOps in terms of it manages the entire life cycle, right? So when I'm running the tests, right, uh, let's say um, in, in this scenario, right, I have this test case. Okay, and I'm gonna just do just simply step one. Here is the uh, nice thing about Jira that you have an opportunity to put the test data. So you can say, hey, for step one, I want this X and Y data. And then you can just say, hey, um, log in successful, something like that, right? So you can do those steps, right? And at the time of execution, you, you know, this is not executed, right? You can just now go ahead and decide it to run that test case. Okay, so when you go to your board, and the issue, okay, now you can just go ahead and say, hey, click on that and it'll allow you to run it. Similar to what you had it in the Azure where you can just say run test case, same way you can do it. And you can just say, hey, which version I wanna run it. Remember we created two versions of this thing? 
and said, I want to do one hour and which environment. I have not created any environment. You can actually create multiple environments like your dev environment, test environment, UAT environment. And you can say, hey, I'm going to run this same test. I'm going to run this environment and this version. And then you can start it. Right. And then you can just see it. Hey, what's the results is coming in. You can just record it. You can say, hey, I'm going to start. This is in progress. Right. And the work is done. And then I can move it and say, hey, it's passed, fail, or blocked. Right. If in the event that I fail it, then I have an ability now uh, to go ahead and uh, fail these things. And I fail the test case, right? Uh, now I can go ahead and if you want it, I can create the uh, bugs associated with that. Yeah, right about that. Yep. Yeah, so let's try to like it's get them to out of these things. Right, so when you can just do it, you can create an issue associated with it. And this time, when you click on issue, you select it, hey, this was a bug. Okay, and then you can add it. This is, the bug is in the dealer management, right? So this one was valid. And you can put all the description, you can do all those attachment and you can just say, hey, create it. Now that bug is now gonna get associated with this particular test case. So somebody coming in, they can see it, hey, it is created with this test case. So when I go back to my board, looking into the story, Okay, now you can just say, hey, there is a test case. If I click on the test case, it shows me what all the bugs are associated with it. Okay, so when I look into execution, it failed, right? Traceability, it gives me that. It gives me history of who created what version and each one of them, I can see it. What was the results? Okay, and then I can access all the bugs and everything. Any questions? Now, this is not something that you will do it, but the developer essentially, just like it in Azure DevOps, you can integrate all of your development tools with it. Here you can do it like it's a development with it. Bitbucket is one of the type of repository where you can put your all of your programming or source code and you can tie it into it. So a developer can just associate and just do all the end-to-end -end work right in this tool with this story. It'll launch your development tool where you can just go and write all the code. You can finish it, bring it back and test it. Okay. Any questions? As you can see, it's fairly simple. It is more or less kind of the same pattern. I create a requirement, right? So if I want to create a new one, typically I can just go ahead into my backlog. I can create it and say, hey, I'm going to create a story. Okay. And let's say, um, So I can just do this, right? And uh, let's say I can use it for to generate a nice number, right? Two digit state followed by plus two digit uh, county. Sorry, 
it's not busy to later, followed by Right, so then you can just put the description if you want to do an attachment, screenshot, whatever you need to do it, you can put into this one. As you can see it, there are, you can do an attachment here. You can form it or put a URL link with your other repository if you need it. You can just say, hey, um, there are labels you can associate it. You can associate to the sprints if you want to do that. Uh, the story points you can put into it, just we talked about, right? Um, and then you can just essentially link if it is related to any other issues, right? So in this case, I said, hey, this requirement is a lot more related to the dealer shop, must be getting an auto-generated unique franchise number. So I can just go ahead and say, hey, this issue is linked to this, and then I just create it, okay? So if you look into it in the backlog, now this AR9 is created. So a couple of other things I want you guys to notice it. Uh, remember when we worked on the test cases and we said, hey, I failed it and created a bug. If you notice it, the bug also shows up in the backlog. And you can assign the bug to appropriate developers as you work on it, right? So I can just say, hey, it's going to be uh, assigned to, let's say Sheila is going to work on this bug. And uh, Let's pick somebody else. Let's say Narayan's going to work on the second bug. So now you can see it uh, just by looking at it from their icons that who from the team is working on what bug. Okay. And then once the bug gets resolved, you, bug will also do the same thing. Let's say if I say, hey, this unable to log in bug, we're going to work on this sprint and fix that issue. You will see that. And then once you start the sprint, every time you try to add it, it will just say, hey, you're adding a scope to it. Are you okay with that? Because remember what I said is we predict work based on the team's capacity. And every time you add more work, essentially you're saying that, hey, I'm gonna do more work than what I'm capable of in that sprint. What typically means that is I'm gonna work weekends or long hours to keep things clean. Okay, so when I go into the, my board, you see this work. And as they work on it, the bug, they fix it, they bring it here, and this is where you can retest it and so on. So it's fairly simple tool, but allows you to manage the whole development lifecycle, including as a tester, while you're working with developer is implementing it, you might be writing the test cases for it. And then once the developer finishes writing the code, you can just go ahead and execute those test cases. So um, my I have a question. So this tool will um, automatically generate the, the reports like traceability matrix and things like yes. that? Yes. Okay. E even the Azure DevOps does the same thing. So one thing I want to encourage all of you is you have an access to this tool, just go play around with it, create it, things, right? And, and compare it with Azure DevOps. One thing you have to get comfortable as you get into the IT world is there is always going to be tools and more or less kind of functionality is similar. You just have to figure it out. Hey, how am I going to use this tool? And the only way it comes at is when you play with it. Okay. So if, if you recall it, right, where we started it, we started looking and reviewing requirements identifying the trees and then defining the test cases. So that work, you will have to do it based on a requirement irrespective of what tool you use. Now, have you captured those into the tool? Is this is the way. And then obviously like it's depending on the tool that you use it. Like for example, if you use uh, the uh, Jira, Jira has something feature called as a roadmap. So typically like it's 
the pro your product owner or your scrum master will work on the roadmaps and says, hey, this is how we're going to deliver this product. In the first two uh, sprints, we'll do deliver this and this functionality. Then we will work on this functionality and so on. So they give you a prediction of roadmap of how this product is going to do it. Because remember, your project is going to probably span multiple months, if not multiple years. And then you need to provide some sort of a forecasting is, hey, when does what type of feature or function will be available? So if you go back into the example that we talked about building a tech software, right? You can build the roadmap and say, hey, in the first two sprint, I'm gonna work on just the simple 1040. Then I'm gonna work into joint 1040. Then I'm gonna work on itemized it. Then I'm gonna add state and so on. So we'll always use one of these tools to create the reports. So we won't have to do it by hand, like using yeah. Word document. Okay. So, so the best part of like it's most of this tool is you can generate a whole bunch of reports, right? What you're not seeing here is what you can just do a project settings and then you can just uh, generate a whole bunch of reports, okay. issue types, a uh, whole bunch of things. you can look into the product pages and then it all talks about, hey, what are the requirements? What decision I made it? You can also do a team retro. So every two weeks, once the sprint ends it, uh, one of the event they do it is team retrospective where they get together and says, how did the project work went in the last two weeks? Were we having technical difficulties? Were there people issues? Were there environment issues? They identify all those hurdles, as well as things that went very well. And then team looks into that and says, okay, if we are failed to do certain things, what changes will make it into the next sprint that will make us as a better team and better delivery focus? And then there are also filters, right? You can just set it up a whole bunch of filters to do the work and so on. Okay. Any questions? What's apps here? So uh, apps are essentially different plugins that you can connect it to your JIRA board. So as I mentioned, right, all of the test management happens into an app called Zephyr. Mm -hmm. And this one is connected to it. If you recall it, I did the code here, right? right. And it says that, hey, it's gonna be in a bit bucket. So I can, like it's launch a bit bucket and integrate an app with this board. So think about it, right? This is your, this becomes your central point to manage all of your work. Mm -hmm. You may still be utilizing other tools to do the work. And as long as there is a plugin capability to get the data in and out from that, it'll show up as an app here. Okay. You can configure the projects and use those things. So it's kind of like if you wanted to um, add in some sort of format of an Excel, then you can just use that. Yeah. Okay. So, so, but mainly those are like its apps are typically your development or report or forecasting type of apps. Okay. Because okay. if you just go into the Atlassian, right, they will show there are a whole bunch of other tools, right? So if I just go to Okay, so if I just go and say, hey, here is that. Okay, and when you look into products, look at the amount of things that they provided. So the Confluence is kind of think about its team collaboration site. Have you guys used something known as Microsoft Teams or any other collaborative tool? Confluence is another product. So this is where you can put all the detailed product documents and then you can just create a plugin 
and says now my app is there. So I can just go quickly read out all the product requirements there. Because if you if you consider right, so at the end of two weeks, if I'm done with all the work, it's done in the sprint. But what if I want to have that access to that work three months down the road, five months down the road, where I create the product documentations? That's when it comes in with the, all the different tools. Okay. So Bitbucket, remember, this is the one that we talked about, the source code management tool. Uh, that we talked about also environment management. There is a service management tool. Um, this is what we are using right now, Jira software. In a big company, you also have something known as Jira Align, where I have 500 projects happening in the company. How do I manage all of them from a one central point? That's what Jira Align allows you to do. So I can see what work is happening on what project by who. Okay, and the marketplace is third party software, right? So these are the products or application that is built by companies which are not part of Atlassian Group. So let's say tomorrow, Herschel and I build a new tool that goes well with the Atlassian or Jira software, then we can put into the marketplace and sell it. Coming back to our quality assurance. Do you guys see it now how the information flows in this one? You already have used with the, uh, the Azure DevOps tool. This is yet another tool to do exactly the same thing. And Herschel, uh, I'm trying to remember uh, the free access to the Atlassian crowd. It's not a time bound, right? It's more restricted based on the amount of the projects and the users you can create it. Uh, that is correct. Uh, I, I believe it's a 30 days so I, 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 with the Zephyr scale. Okay. Um, with the testing management. So yeah, I think the um, plugin is time bound. Yeah. Plugin. Yep. Yeah. But otherwise you you will have access to the Jira. Um, that's, that's not the issue, I think. Yeah. Yes. And you, so you can I, always create a free one. I mean, uh, create a yeah. different account and work through that. Yeah. So what, what I would recommend is uh, you have access to this tool for 30 days. Spend a couple of hours to create a couple of test cases, a couple of requirements, just like what I showed it here. Get comfortable using this tool also. Because when you go for a workforce for interviews, right? They will ask it, hey, what are the testing tool? What are the life management tools that you're using, right? And if you say, hey, I've used Jira, they will ask high level broad questions. Well, what are epics in Jira or what are the stories? How do you create the test cases associated with them? So that's where your hands-on experience will come handy to you. So if you guys don't have any questions, I think that was the key topics that I wanted to talk. So, Herschel, I uh, wanna talk about the second software that we need for the weekend? Oh. Yeah, certainly. Um, so I, I think most of you, you guys need to go in a, as the lip said, right? Uh, work through this tool since you guys have access today. Uh, let's work through that. And while you guys are doing that, both Dilip and I will work with uh, uh, individual students to actually install the automation software, which is a UFT. So hopefully uh, you all have downloaded earlier. Uh, if not, go ahead and trigger the download for the UFT software. And uh, once you are ready, then let us know and we'll kick off the installation. Uh, it typically takes about uh, 20 minutes to 30 minutes, uh, depending on the computer speed and it will require Windows machine. Uh, so I think all of you have Windows uh, software, uh, Windows operating system. So so we, we are good there. Did you had a question? Um, yes, so like, do we still do the, like, 
for when we go for the step by step testing, right? Do we still just do the manual thing, like going to the different website and checking yes. if it's going or not? Yeah, it's the same thing. Okay. Here, right now, we we will talk about the automation and the advanced way to do the testing, but that also requires programming, right? So in Jira, you will still do the testing exactly the same way that you had done it before. Remember when I ran the test cases, right? So when I did that and went through execution. Yep, that makes sense. Right. Uh, it, it did kind of like it's, uh, when I say it's, hey, I want to like, here's my test script. Mm -hmm. Oh, partially you already had one. It's great. So you can actually like, it's now run this uh, step by step and, and then actually do it, right? So here is like, he had run it three times. First mm -hmm. time it passed, second time he kind of abruptly stopped. And third time when he ran it, it failed. Yeah. Okay. So it's the same way you can do it, right? Uh, I want to do the details and then uh, you can just go to test scripts. You can either modify, edit it, add the test data, put the parameters and, and then run it, the history based on that. So this one is ART1. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. And then you can just go back to that, whichever the requirement is associated with it. So that's traceability. You can just go there, right? And then you can just execute it, the test cases from there. Sounds good. Okay. Okay, so here you can just go and launch. Say I wanna do stop. You go and says, hey, I'm going to go ahead and get this started. So it starts the timer. And then I want to just go to the first step. When I run it, I'll say, here is, I'll go into the browser. So I'll just create a browser. I'll just add this app URL. Okay. Uh, it's a different URL. Um, yeah. It's artloan.azurewebsites.net. Okay. So, you know that in this case, right, I'll just say it's here. You can type the actual result. Say to correct the URL. I'll just show the home page. Right. So I, I may just do this and then say, hey, I'm gonna pass this. So now it captured my actual test results. Then if you see it now, it's the second step. So I'll just go to Okay, so now it allowed me to go to the admin page. So I'll go back to my, this one and say, it's, yes, this has been executed, right? And you can just say, and then I'll say, hey, I'm gonna, Go ahead and done with this two step. Now it's all done, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and it automatically picks up since you had two steps only and both of them passed, you are done. And it also stopped the counter. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. And then if now, if I go back to this A1 test case and look into its execution history, you will see that here is the latest execution. I just finished it right now. Yep, that makes sense perfectly. All right.
Everybody good? Do you feel that you're comfortable now that you can just go ahead and create a requirements and write a test case and play around with this thing? Looks like it's a quiet evening. Everybody's kind of impacted with the snow. I'm just a little bit confused, but I'm sure if I create one or two case, uh, I will understand. Yeah, and Herschel is recording this session. You should be able to see it. And um, even if you just go into YouTube and just say, hey, I want to create a, let's say a story or requirement in Jira, there are a whole bunch of videos and clips available that you can actually see. The only thing might be different is a little bit of version difference but you will get the gist of how to create it. Yeah, I, I would suggest you guys create a new requirement and associate a test case and uh, go through the execution cycle, at least one test case, um, so that it will you, you, you will get a good idea about it, how it works uh, using Jira. I'll, I'll add one nugget for all of you, right? So in JP Morgan, we use Jira and uh, like it's, I kind of run my teams in an agile manner. And so I'm kind of pretty much spending almost 40 to 50% of my time in the tool, either launching and doing the activities or updating and collaborating with my team members. And we are actually working on the codes that goes into the bit bucket and so on. So it's, it, I would recommend like it's get very comfortable with Azure DevOps as well as Jira. Chances that wherever you go in interview also, they will ask you a few questions around how to use it and how you kind of manage all of your test cases and manage the traceabilities and so on. All right, I think we can move on to the second part. Um, Let me stop the sharing.